Hi, I'm Paul with Madcap Software. In this video, I am going to go over building and publishing your Flare output. So you have all of your content, uh, you've added files, you've styled it up real good, you've gone into your targets even, and you've put in all kinds of settings. Now you're ready to get that output generated and into the hands of your end users. So how do you do this? Well, I'm going to give you a short answer in case you just went quick and dirty, real quick to the point. Then I'm going to give you a longer answer because there are all kinds of bells and whistles that have to do with building and publishing that can make your life much easier. Here's the quickest way to build and publish your output. So I have this Flare project open. I've gotten all my stuff done. Now I just need to build it. So I'm going to go to the project ribbon and I can click build primary that drop down and select what I want to build. Yeah, I could click just the face of the button and that'll just build one of the outputs, the one that's considered primary. And primary, you'll see it right next to the name of that target. All that means is it just hooks into that shortcut. So I could make any target my primary one it just kind of depends on which one you're focused on at the moment and you want quick access to. So HTML5 is my primary one. I'm going to click that and it opens up the build window pane here at the bottom and it's going to run through this and move things around just a little bit. And in just a moment, because this is a really small project, it's going to finish and you know it's finished when these uh, columns here turn dark green. And one of the things you wanna watch is these columns over here. You might have some warnings, some of them that aren't that important that are under ignored, but if you get one here in that column, you can open up your build log right here and see what the problem is. And then errors over here is just gonna kind of prevent the thing from building altogether. So I've built the output. So now I can just double click this row that opens up my output. In this case, it's an online help system and I can view it and test it, whatever I want. Now, if things are okay with it, I can click this button, open output folder, or I can just do it right up here. That opens up Windows Explorer to the place where my output files are. In this case, it's HTML5. Uh, that's the name of my target. These are all my output files. And uh, in this case, it's an online help system. So it's a lot of files. And so you, all you want to do is copy and paste these wherever you want them to be located so that your users can access them. And in this case, you would point your users to this entry file, that default.htm file, so that they can go to the home page. But I might uh, have generated, say, a PDF, and it would just be one file in here. That's it. That's how simple it is to build and publish your output. But I'm going to now go into a longer answer and give you lots of ways that you can make this more automated. Now the long answer for building and publishing your output. So first of all, you just need to ask yourself, do you want to do this um, manually or automatically? If you wanna do it manually, you can just do what I showed. Or another option, if you want to do it manually, maybe you want to use a third-party tool such as FileZilla to transfer files up to a server somewhere. But let's say that you want to do this more automatically. Well, Flare has this feature called destinations or publishing destination files. And I have one that I've created right here. And all this file is going to do is when you integrate it with your target, it's going to make a copy of those output files and it's going to automatically transfer those wherever you tell it to. So there's nothing mysterious about it. It just copies those output files somewhere. This is an optional thing that you can do in most cases. However, uh, there are a couple situations where it might be mandatory, such as if you're trying to implement Elasticsearch into your output, then it's necessary. So what you wanna do is create a separate destination for each location. So here I've created one that I've called desktop. So I just wanna transfer files automatically from my Flare project some, to some location on my computer desktop. I'm going to right click this and select add destination and maybe 
I will create one called web. So I am now using this destination file to transfer files up to the internet somewhere. And you can see it opens it up automatically in this destination editor. I can open up this one, same editor. Now I'm going to go through these different options that you have. So in this example, file system is selected. And that just means, hey, it's just transferring it someplace on my computer. And I've already gone in and clicked this and selected, hey, just put the files here in this subfolder. Now, there are these optional fields down here that you can use. And these are available in all the other destination types, too. Uh, I'm not going to go into these in detail. You can read about them in the online help, but these are all optional fields. So let's look at some of the others. Well, I mentioned Elasticsearch. That is if you want to implement kind of a fuzzy matching search feature into your output. So you need to use this. I am not going to go into detail into Elasticsearch because there's too much to explain, but you can go into the online help, just search for Elasticsearch and there's the documentation on that and it will spell everything out for you. Now, there are a couple of others in here called FTP and SFTP, and those are really used to transfer output files up to a server. And if I select FTP, you can see I've got all these extra fields in here, and you might need to get together with your network administrator to get some of this information if necessary and your credentials. And then there's SFTP, which is similar, but SFTP is just there's, there are more fields, it's a little bit more complex, but it is more secure than the simple FTP option. Another option you have is source control. So some people want to generate their output and automatically transfer those output files up to some source control repository. Uh, again, I'm not gonna go into all these fields. You can go read about all of these things in the online help. Now let's say that you wanna transfer things uh, up to the web somewhere. You have a Salesforce account, a Zendesk account, a ServiceNow account. You can select one of these and you've got to go through and activate, putting your login credentials. They all have their own unique fields, but it's real easy to see what these things do. If you create one of these types of destination files and you publish, it is going to transfer those output files up to Salesforce, up to ServiceNow, up to Zendesk. And usually these types of outputs are real simple uh, XHTML outputs that you are generating and publishing. Another option you have down here is Xylem Syndicate. So Madcap Software acquired uh, the company Xylem and one of the products available at Xylem is called Syndicate. Now Xylem is a leader in the learning and development space. So a lot of e-learning courses, things like that. And Syndicate is this content delivery system up on the cloud. Now, most people using it are in that e-learning space, but if you're a technical writer, you can uh, create technical documentation and you can transfer that up there. And there are some unique benefits to doing this. Uh, for example, federated search, uh, searching across outputs, faceted search, um, delivering your output uh, across a CDN network. So it's faster downloads for people. So there are lots of benefits to that. So same thing, you would select that, put in your login credentials, where do you wanna publish, so on and so forth. Now, for some of the options in here, such as Salesforce, Zendesk, ServiceNow, Syndicate, I've got separate videos on each of those. So I'll have links in the description and in the playlist at the end of this video. You can check those out if you just wanna learn more. So I'm gonna come into my desktop destination file. I'm gonna change it back to file system and I will go and select th that folder where I want it to transfer things. So there it is, click save. So I've got my destination file set up. So how do I use it? Well very easily, I can just open up my target and then I go to publishing and you can see it lists whatever destination files I've added and you just select which one do you wanna use or do you wanna use multiple ones? And let's just say I wanna use this one in this case and I'm going to click save. 
Now I can just click build, wait for that to finish, and then click publish, or I can just cut to the chase and click publish. It lets me know, hey, your output's not up to date. Do you want to regenerate it? Say yes. It goes through and it's going to generate this. And you're going to see as soon as it finishes, it's then going to publish the output. So it's finished. This means it's finished building. And this column right here shows you that it is finished publishing. And here I've gone in Windows Explorer and I've navigated to that spot I told it. And you can see, sure enough, there are my output files. Now I've opened up another project because I want to show you something else that happens with those destination files. This particular project is bound to Madcap Central. So Central is our cloud-based hosting solution. There's other things you can do besides hosting output, but that's one of the things you can do there. And just like Syndicate, there are a lot of unique features up on Central. So if you decide, hey, I want to use Central for hosting output, great. It's very easy to build and publish output actually directly from Flare. So if I go to View and Madcap Central, you can see I'm logged in and I and this information lets me know I'm already bound. Uh, my project is synced with my license up on Madcap Central. Now in my project organizer, you can see destinations and it's empty. I don't have a destination file. And because I'm bound to central, I don't need one. All I need to do is go into my target and let's open up this one right here. And I go into this publishing tab. And because I'm bound to central, this automatically shows up and this checkbox is selected. I could deselect it if I want, but I want it selected and I'll save that. And now I can do the same thing. I can build and publish and it'll automatically transfer things up to central. So I'm going to click publish. Again, I don't have generated output, so I click yes. It's going to go through this. And when it finishes publishing, then I can go up into central and check it out. Okay, it's all finished. So I've opened up Madcap Central. This is my project, module one, go to builds. And you can see there's several things in here because some of them I did previously and I did them up here. So this is another place that you can build output, your flare output. So you can do it manually here, but look over here at this source. You can see these three icons are central icons. So that means I, I did my building up here. This one is a flare icon. And so it automatically built things up here. Now this doesn't mean that this output is accessible right away to your end users, you still need to create what's called a site and connect it with that build. And then your users will be able to see it. So I'm not going to go into all that. I have a whole bunch of central videos. I'll also link to those in the description and you can check those out. So that's a short way and a long way to build and publish output, but I am going to do one more section in this video where I'm going to just cover some of the build and publish options you have throughout the interface because there isn't just one place to do this, there are lots of choices. Now, I've already shown you a few places in the interface where you can build and publish your output. I'm going to show you some more. First of all, yes, you can do these things from the project ribbon, the build, uh, view, and there's publish right there. And again, uh, the face of the button connects to your primary target, or you can just click a drop down and select a specific target that you want to build or publish. You can also do this from the project organizer, which I have open here. So if I wanted to build this target, I could just right click and there are my options. There's build and there's view and there's publish. And of course, we get all of these options in the target itself. So you can do it if you have that target open, just quickly click uh, those buttons. Now, another option you have is to create a batch target. So I'm going to right click my targets folder and select add batch target and give it a name, click add. And it opens up this interface. And so this is just going to lit automatically list all of your targets. As you add more, they'll be listed in here. And then you can just click these check boxes for whatever you want to build and or publish. And then you have these options right up here to build and publish everything in here that's checked, build only or publish only. I'll go ahead and save that. I'm going to open up that builds window pane. 
that usually opens automatically down here at the bottom. So there's another thing you can do is click Build Targets. And it opens up this dialog. I have navigated down to my project file. And as soon as I select that, the targets available open up over here. And so I can build and publish uh, multiple targets at the same time, just manually doing that and clicking OK. Click Cancel. Another option you have is to build from the command line. So I've opened up my command prompt. And if you want to use this, you can look in the online help and it tells you all of the syntax you need to use, how to do this. But this is a great way to build and publish output automatically without even having Flare open at all. So you can do that. And that's going to do it for building and publishing Flare output. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.